So web API and mobile apps. So we have been testing these for decades, right? So they are very simple, like clicking a button, get a response and check if it matches the requirements or not. It's very simple, very easy for testing and so on, correct? But when it comes to the large language models or LLMs like ChatGPT or any other LLM, things flips upside down. Suddenly the answer is never just as yes or no or a boolean like true or false. It's a spectrum. So how we even test these systems? In traditional software testing, we deal with deterministic systems. That means if I call an API with input A, I always expect an output B. For example, testing a login API. So I send a correct username and a password and I must get a 200 OK response code. If I send wrong credentials, then I must get a 401 unauthorized. Even on the mobile apps, if I tap the add to cart button, the items should land in my cart every single time. So these rules are rigid, predictable and binary like pass or fail. Now let's talk about the LLMs. Here we are not testing correctness in a binary sense. We are testing quality. The same input prompt could generate slightly different outputs each time. And in the worst case, all of them could still be valid. For example, if I ask an LLM, summarize the Agile manifesto, it could return three sentences, five bullet points or a story like explanation, which one is right. Well, all of them are potentially could be right. That makes testing harder because there is no single expected output. Instead, we evaluate along the dimensions like relevance, accuracy, fluency, safety and usefulness. How LLM testing works. So there are certain techniques that we use to test the LLMs and we don't use those techniques in the traditional testing like testing the web API or mobile apps. And few of those techniques are intrinsic versus extrinsic evaluation, human in the loop review, LLM as a judge and error categorization and observability and metrics. So let's talk about the first one intrinsic versus extrinsic evaluation. So here in this case, the intrinsic checks the output itself, like the grammar, coherence or the factual correctness. Basically, it is testing the LLM itself, whereas the extrinsic testing, this checks the usefulness in a different context. For example, if we try to integrate this LLM with a chatbot, how is the response is going to be helpful for the user? So this is where we try to evaluate the LLMs in the integration of different applications. And the next technique is human in the loop review. So unlike API testing, we need real human judgment to say that this answer is helpful and this one is misleading. So whatever the output that LLM is generating, someone should be review it and needs to be finalized that, hey, this is right or this is misleading. And the third technique is LLM as a judge. So ironically, we sometimes use another LLM to grade the outputs. For example, one model generates responses and another model scores them on accuracy and tone. And the fourth is error categorization. Instead of just saying fail, we classify all the errors that are coming from LLM testing. And they can be categorized like hallucination, bias, incomplete answers, safety violation, etc. and so on. And the last technique is observability and metrics. In APIs, we track the response times and error rates, right? Similarly, in LLMs, we add metrics like token usage, latency, user satisfaction and failure categories. Now let's look into the core differences between LLM testing and the traditional app testing. So here is a table comparing some critical aspects. If you look into the test case type for the web API mobile testing and hereafter I'm going to refer this as a traditional testing, we will have the fixed input and a predictable output. But whereas in the LLM testing, we'll be having the input, but there could be many possible outputs. And from a validation standpoint, we just have only the binary like pass or fail or the exact match in the traditional app testing. But whereas in the LLM, the response will be subjective. So is it helpful? Is it accurate? And is it safe? And so on. So there are different parameters that you need to evaluate on. It's not just like pass or fail. And from a metric standpoint, 
we will verify the status codes and the ui state and then api schemas and the response codes right but whereas from an llm testing standpoint we'll be verifying the perplexity and then the rogue user satisfaction and then different scores from the bugs point of view we'll be having the broken links errors and you know some crashes but whereas from llm side of the things we'll be having the hallucinations we have the bias safety violations so these are not just the bugs those are the different categories of the bugs that we are going to find out from an LLM testing point of view. Automation. So automation is applicable for the traditional web testing or, you know, API testing or, you know, whatever, the mobile testing, right? Similarly, we also have the automation tools available to perform the LLM testing. But however, we'll do a mixed approach. So we'll include both automation and human reviews. So human reviews are very essential for the LLM testing or the evaluation. And finally, we have the scale. So it is easy to run thousands of test cases when it comes to the traditional testing perspective. But if it comes to the LLM testing, it is very hard to scale because the outputs are very subjective and requires a lot of context and memory to actually simulate the different edge cases and use cases. So to conclude the differences, I would like to take one real world example that would probably give you more context on this. So let's consider an example for a traditional web or API app testing. So imagine you have a test case called search for shoes. So you will go to the website, you search for the shoes and then you expect a list with the price tags. And if the list is empty or 404, the result is basically failed. And if you get the list of the shoes, then the result is pass. Now when it comes to the LLM testing, let's consider a scenario that the user is inputting a prompt like summarize the news today in three bullet points. Then the potential outcome could be coherent summary or a biased or made up statements or unsafe advice. So if you run the same prompt by a different user, the response will not be exactly matching between the two users. There could be slightly difference between the responses again. It's not like assert that, assert this. This is not like you know, true or false or pass or fail in the case of LLM testing. So instead, the testers must evaluate the outputs for correctness, motivation, tone, and even hallucination and so on. All right, so let's highlight a few unique challenges to the LLM testing. So some of the hardest parts include non-deterministic outputs. So no two run, they generate an identical response. And bias and safety. So a model might answer factually, but includes offensive phrasing. And context length and rag testing. So for systems that fetch documents before answering, so we have to test retrieval and generation. And of course the cost, every test run consumes tokens. So test strategy must be balanced between the quality versus the budget. All right, so here are the closing takeaways that I want to emphasize from this video is, the traditional testing is about precision and rules, whereas the LLM testing is about judgment and quality scales. So as testers, this shift means we can't just rely on assertions and automation scripts. We need to bring in human review, creative test design, and even AI-assisted evaluation. If web API and mobile testing was about controlling for the known, so LLM testing is about navigating the unknowns. All right, so what do you think? Is LLM testing the future skill every tester must learn or just a niche area? So let me know in the comments. I would love to hear your perspective. All right, so that's all for this video and I will see you in the next.